first off, I don't think anybody anticipated that, um, especially after the week before. So yeah, it, it was it was kind of it was strange in a way because we were all expecting this ding dong, you know, like one end to the other, goals, chances, and it was completely dominant first half, wasn't it? But the keeper didn't help. I mean, he was horrendous. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, we're going to talk about but that Liverpool, later. Actually. Liverpool were at it. He got yeah. his selection spot on, and of course, the freshness of the big hitters coming back who missed the midweek game. Mane was sensational. Is he the best player in the Premier League, Mane? I thought he was unbelievable, unplayable. I think at times he's had spells where he has been the best. I mean, he's not reached Salah's heights, has he, in terms of goal scoring and productivity and product. But uh, he's he's my favourite forward at Liverpool and has been for a long time because of his all-round game. And he, he never... You know one thing, with Sadio Mane, when he plays, you know you're always going to get one thing. Yeah. And that's tremendous energy and work ethic, even if his game's off. Yeah. That never falls. Yeah. Um, but he was great. Play, he had a bit of criticism recently playing down the middle. But it was um, it it paid dividends at the weekend. Yeah, you expect City to come back second half, don't mm. you? They had a couple mm. of chances, but it's, uh, it's it's job done. You just get the game won. However, yeah. Well, Simon, after you changed your underwear for about the seventeenth <laughs> yeah. time, indeed, did you sit in front of your telly and I watch did. your beloved I Palace? Did. Diaz is a player. Did I watch Palace? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Diaz was good. Yeah. yeah, Diaz for Liverpool was outstanding. Yeah, um, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was it was the result I expected. I think. Um, the loss of Conor Gallagher didn't help the situation, but I think Chelsea would have probably beaten Palace without, with Conor Gallagher. Um, they didn't really land a blow on Chelsea, um, and very difficult to do so because Chelsea are a very decent side, and it was what I expected it to be. You know, Chelsea came out and and in the second half were better than both. But in the first half, it was pretty pedestrian, wasn't it? Mm. It was a pretty cancelled out, nullified game. Yeah, um, and it's difficult because Palace, if Palace opened up, then they will get picked off by Chelsea, and if they didn't, it became a game where. You know, they competed, they worked very hard, they were a very honest side, they're far more engaging and and, and, and in, in, interesting on the eye than they were with Roy. But there were levels, like we talk about in boxing, there were levels in football. And Palace, to get to an FA Cup semi-final and to finish inside the top 10 or top 11 this season will be a good season for Patrick Vieira. We must remember where we are mm. and build from there. That's a good point. Have they hit their ceiling now, would you say, Simon? What, for this season? For this season. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think they're there and thereabouts. I think, you know, we must look at it and say... OK, f- remember that there was a lot of questions, and in my mind too, about what Patrick Vieira was going to do. There was also a lot of rebuilding that was required. I think it was an opportunity, quite frankly, to get rid of some of the people that need to be gotten rid of and to change the configuration of the squad. So some people saw it as a challenge for Patrick. Christ, he's got 10 players out of contract. What's he going to do? I think it gave him an opportunity to clear the decks. Uh, and he brought in good players, and he's got other players that are performing on a slightly higher level than they have done in previous seasons. Yeah. But I think that Palace, under Patrick Vieira, have laid some nice foundations... And it's interesting to see what they'll do next. Yes. But this yeah. season can be, you know, not mustn't let it wind down to a nothing because they must try and finish as high as they possibly can. Well, that's right. But and, I think it's a decent season for Patrick Vieira. And of course, unlike Palace, Chelsea made it and they're in the final. But Danny, when you look at it, I mean, they started the season. Simon had them as, as his favourites to go on and win the Premier League. Many people did. Out the title race fairly early on. Out the Champions League now, albeit what an effort uh, against Madrid. Lukaku's failed move. Seismic change in the boardroom. And we'll find out who's got the reins of the club this week. I mean, how, how do you judge the level of Chelsea's success pre this cup final? Will it only be a success if they won, if they win the thing? Even then, I think there'll be a tinge of disappointment at the club because of the expectancy and because of what they've achieved before, especially after coming into the season as champions of Europe. They were, I think, they all felt with the signing of Lukaku they were going to be more competitive. They will look at that that period of time in the season where they had a lot of COVID cases. I remember Thomas Tuchel talking about it, a lot of players missing and had that really bad run, didn't they, where yes. they struggled. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, I think I think the feeling will be dis- one of disappointment at the club. They they will be able to look back and say, well, we had this problem, that problem, then the ownership problem. But the Abramovich thing has come later in the season, so therefore you can't really blame I think anyone it. using that as an excuse. I listened to Joe Cole on waffling about how the players have had to overcome that rubbish. No. They're getting their wages, they're not interested. They're interested their la- their island is where Thomas Tuchel lives on. Yeah. And Thomas Tuchel manages that space. It doesn't affect them in the slightest. I think given what we've seen from this season from Liverpool Man City, if we'd have known what we know now about the performance of Liverpool Man City, I think very few of us would have picked Chelsea to go above Liverpool Man City, even if Lukaku would hit his straps. Because these two sides the challenge for this league now is if these two sides keep on evolving and moving forward, this has the danger <clears throat> of becoming a two, three-tiered division because if you look at it now, they're dominating all the trophies, Liverpool, Chelsea, 
um, Man City are dominating all the trophies, all the competitions. You know, Liverpool have won the League Cup. Chelsea and Liverpool in the FA Cup final. Liverpool and Man City, I think, are going to win the Champions League. Liverpool and Man City are going to win the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, you're starting... And the, and the gap between fourth space and third, second and third is a mile United, mm. Tottenham and Arsenal are a mile away from from Liverpool and Man City and they're about, you know, less than a mile away from Chelsea. Chelsea yeah. are a far better side than they've shown in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, but this dominant Simon only lasts as long as Klopp and, and Guardiola are there. Well, yes. I mean, and that's an argument that we're raising, which is what happens next when these two-year contracts they both have left run out. We never know what these guys are going to do. You know, they, they may well stay longer. Right now, we've got them for another two years, and we'll see how these clubs evolve and the succession programme, because the measure of Klopp and Guardiola won't be just what they've done. Yeah. It will be what their legacy is and who comes in after them. It's a good point. It's a good point. Well, we're going to be hearing from uh, Van Dyke. We're going to be hearing from Robertson on the possibility of with this uh, quadruple. I have to say, I got to Wembley early on, on Saturday. I had the most delightful conversation with about a dozen Liverpool stewards. You know how the clubs take their own stewards these days? And uh, the Liverpool stewards were there with their red, uh, yellow vests on and their, their, their Liverpool badges. Great old chat with them. It was brilliant. It actually made my day. That was even before uh, this incredible match unfolded. And that was even before I spoke to Van Dyke. I suppose and incredible. Robertson afterwards that support is about as awesome as I've seen yeah, from yeah. any club I mean even before the game I sensed I was out we did a, we did pitch side we were we were we were trying yeah. to talk pitch side but yeah. the noise from the Liverpool fans there's like a feeling of expectancy like that they know something great's coming people talk about this quadruple mm. I would go as simple as to talk about a treble yeah any treble that they achieve this season is still monumental and historic oh yeah yeah. Never mind quadruple. My overriding takeaway from that Cup semi final, if we've got time for the break, was to look at Man City's team, look at the way they played in that game. I thought to myself, I think they'll let Liverpool have the Cups. And I think we're going to see Man City win the next seven games and win the Premier League. And I think we're going to see the mother of all Champions League defi- finals that perhaps define what the season looks like for these two managers. Because somewhere along the line, Guardiola's got to win the Champions League. I know we're skipping past the semi final, but I expect both of these teams to come through the yeah, semi final of the Liverpool Man City Champions League final. Yeah. I expect. Man City to win the Premier League and I expect to see the mother of all Champions League finals between two guys that are going to look to prove to one another domestic FA Cup whilst brilliant does not rank with the Champions League it'll be great if we win the, the FA Cup and the League Cup yes. I just got this feeling that we're going to see Man City win the Premier League and this, this, as I say this mother of all Champions That's League finals where, where Guardiola made. looks like he's got to do something tactically different because ultimately last year he got outmanoeuvred by two corners post-match Simon uh, what I can tell you is standing in the mix zone at the end at Wembley the feeling I think that Manchester City had was alright we haven't made it to the FA Cup final but all is not lost, not mm. by a long way. And, and be... that's why I saw Caldun Barak and Ferran Soriano mm. walk by me and spend a bit of time and in the, in and the City be no dressing stars room. And from that game. I mean, because they, they could have been, Liverpool could have been 4-5 or five up in the first half yeah. because they were out of sight. Yeah. And, they did, and, they, and I'm not surprised because I think Klopp has this tendency to react very quickly to games that he's played previously. And he was not going to let Man City do what they did the previous week. No. So Liverpool started faster, quicker and got out City. Yeah. And of course, the team selection will give Man City the opportunity and the goalkeeper to take no side psychological scars away from this game Right, it wasn't our full team the goalkeeper let us down so we can go into the next set of games when we play right. Liverpool with a clean yeah. slate and David good games. morning to you David one of many messages coming in I don't know why you thought this didn't think you guys would be working today result well we are mm-hmm. it was always going to be that way it's Jim White Simon Jordan Danny Murphy working today on Easter Monday on Talk Sport Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.